welcome everyone to a yet another topic on J unit tutorial now in this one we are going to talk about J unit installation how we can do the installation of J unit and what are the different steps we can get involved on that now let's talk about what exactly is the J unit tool all about like what are the different things we can implement with the help of this tool here so J unit is basically a kind of unit testing framework which is there for the Java so it's kind of a default offering for the Java programming language that we can use the JUnit for the unit testing framework for performing the unit testing. Now the main benefit of uh, the JUnit is like it's using the same syntax like a Java programming language. So it makes it very easy for a Java developer to write and execute the test cases. So most of the times when the developers are going to work on the Java programming languages, so they prefer that JUnit as a uh, default unit testing framework for them because they get the language advantage, they get the easily integrations on the Eclipse. So those benefits helps the developers to decide JUnit specifically for writing the test cases and running the test cases there. Now, whenever these test cases are actually being executed, whenever you add up a new piece of source code, so uh, all the unit test cases will be executed, will be again executed there. Every time when you run a new build, so all the unit test cases gets executed. But you also need to take care that if you are adding up a new functionalities, you also have to add the corresponding test cases to that. So increasing more and more code will, uh, will be done by the developers, but at the same time, you have to sync or you have to keep your test cases up to date also and as part of every build each and every test cases will be re-executed every time you're doing the build five times six times a day every time the uh, all unit test cases will be executed over there and the response will be given back right now let's talk about what exactly is a unit testing now unit testing refers to the testing of the small small modules or the small piece of chunks or the codes here now it's basically used to have the early identification of the defects and the bugs because you cannot simply rely on the uh, QA team to perform the testing and then provide the feedback whereas on the uh, with the help of this unit testing framework we can immediately get the uh, feedback right away once we are running the test cases we immediately we will be able to know like these are the different test cases which we have got over here now the developers uh, don't even have to spend uh, more time on fixing the bugs and issues because these test cases will help them with the easy and the fast feedback so according to that they can fix the bugs and they can uh, take the decision whether the source code is working fine as expected or there is any kind of issues as such present with this one so unit test casing is something which is very important from the developers perspective also because it helps the developers to understand that they whether they have written a successful code or if there is any kind of scope of issues or bugs over here also it uh, the successful unit test cases uh, increases the overall confidence of the developers because it uh, increases the overall uh, performance and the quality of the product also. So by having the uh, successful executions of the unit test cases, developers can understand that yes, the source code is working fine as expected and there is no scope of bugs or any issues as such with this source code here. So that's the main benefit which we get with unit testing that with this fast feedback channel, we will be able to take uh, the decisions whether the source code is ready for the production environment deployment or not. So that's the main benefit which we get with the unit testing here. Now, of course, this can be done in two ways, manual testing and automated testing. Now, in case of manual testing, you have to do this thing manually within a manual tester or a manual testing approach. And in this one, you will not be depending on any kind of uh, automated tool which can be scheduled or which can be executed in non-interactive manner. On the other hand, automated test case is something which uh, is used to be executed using the uh, tool. And uh, it is something which is being done so that you will be able to get the complete automation there is no manual efforts which is required as such you are going to have like complete uh, deployment and automations being done as such in this case so automated testing is something in which you will be giving more focus on the automated automation tools you may be having one or a couple of tools which using which you can write the automated test cases and you can perform the complete automation in case of manual testing it's quite uh, you know less reliable because you are dependent on the uh, a particular uh, tester which can ha perform the testing uh, according to his efforts. And it's quite uh, time consuming also because you can only run the test cases for probably eight to nine hours per day. 
whereas on the other hand the automated test case is something which is re quite reliable because it does not depends on a human so, uh, so requirement so it can be done like 24 cross 7 so anytime you can run those uh, test cases and that's the reason why these test cases are quite faster as compared to any other manual testing approach here so j unit test cases and the automated test cases really helps the developers and the qa professionals to test the source code much faster as compared to the manual testing now let's talk about the JUnit installation. Now as part the, of the installation of JUnit, you don't require to install any exe file or any kind of program there. There are a couple of jar files which is required which needs to be there into the a class path so that every time when you write some JUnit test cases, you should be able to refer those jar files because without having those jar files into your class path of your project, you will not be able to run the JUnit test cases. So that's the only dependency you require. If you are running a Maven build, then these dependencies will be added up into the pound.xml file. If you are referring or doing the build from the Eclipse or doing the development from the Eclipse, then you have to put up these jar files into the uh, class path of the project so that these jar files can be loaded up and the JUnit can be referred over here. So the installation is pretty straightforward, but let's see like uh, what are the different steps we need to follow. Now, as a pre-request of uh, understanding the demo about JUnit, the first initial two things is like you require a JDK to be installed. Now, you can download the JDK 8 over here from this Oracle website. And uh, this is something which you can download for the Windows or whatever platform you have. You can pretty much install it for whatever platform is there. So, for Windows platform, you can download for 32-bit and 64-bit uh, both option over here. And once it's installed, so you should be able to use the Eclipse latest tool. Now, now, um, all you need to do is that like, you need to go to eclipse.org and there you can download the latest version of the Eclipse. Now these two main things which you require because Eclipse will be required for creating the change unit test cases and of course how a kind of ID where you can run some test cases, change unit test cases and all. And then uh, Oracle is something which is required as a runtime for running the JDK also and the change unit uh, test cases also and Eclipse here. So that's a pre-request which we got over here in this one. So I have already got these two things installed into my system and I have uh, Eclipse there. So let's move on to the Eclipse and see that how it go goes on there. But before that, you also require the JUnit jar files because in order to have a, a particular JUnit framework loaded up, we require some uh, particular files, jar files over here in this case. So I can just search for JUnit. 4 over here and when you search for JUnit 4 so what happens like this particular page will help you or give you all the details about the JUnit 4. Now you can go for the uh, version notes of the different different versions but uh, if you want to download all you need to do is like you can say like download and install and the moment you go there so it will give you the details now there are two jar files which is required JUnit.jar file is required over here j uh, hamcrest hyphen core dot jar file these two jar files are required here if you want to download it into the test class path if you feel that you want to uh, use a maven based uh, project then in that case you have to specifically go for this dependency in the palm file and according to that that particular version will be downloaded and will be referred over there so these are the ways that how you can get uh, the particular software the required uh, things into the place so i'm going to put up these jar files into a location so that i should be able to get uh, the particular details uh, stored and I can refer to them into my Eclipse. So I'm going to download this one here from the Maven Central. So I'm going to download this jar file and then I'm going to go back hamcrest-core so that also I want to download. download chart so these two jar files I have uh, downloaded and I will be referring these ones into my project because these are the ones which is being required into my project as such so let's go back to the Eclipse and uh, let's place these jar files into a location so that into my class path I can refer the complete folder with all these two jar files inside that so let's go ahead with that so let's create a particular new project over here so we'll go for new Java project and here I can give it like a simple one. 
a simple project name I can provide here and uh, JDK I'm using like 1.8 so that's the JDK version which I have utilized over here and then finish so this is the project which I have got like in the source directory now I'm going to create a simple uh, file over here a new class file over here so I'll create it like J unit class so I'm going to create a class over here in this one and of course I need to have a particular void main also over here in this uh, specific class over here because this is the initial class I'm trying to create over here in this one I can create a custom uh, particular methods also over here but uh, let's see like if we can execute or we can run some particular functions as such over here now I'm going to declare a function over here public void J unit method so I'm just going to create a method over here I'm just going to run a particular print statement over here Executing J unit test cases. Right now, this is a kind of a method which is there, which of course I can run into my uh, public uh, void main, and uh, this function will be executed, uh, will be called upon over here. Now, the thing is that uh, right now, uh, since it's just a normal function, but the moment I convert it, like I have a at the rate test mentioned over here so what will happen like this will be converted into the form of a test cases now of course like right now there is no imports which is available there as part of this one so you can see that the uh, the the time I have added this annotation at the rate test I will be able to see like yes add J unit 4 library to the build path is something which is coming up over here or it's saying like add j unit 5 so whatever the library you feel that you want to add you can do that and that particular library will be added up over here now let's go for the j unit 4 library here the moment i do that what will happen you will see some changes first you will see the changes in the top saying that import org dot j unit dot test that's a first import and second import will be like j unit 4 you will see like these two jar files is automatically being picked up by the eclipse now even if you don't download these jar files this is the main benefit of the eclipse that these are already a part of the plugins you can see their path that these are already installed in the if getting your learning started is half the battle what if you could do that for free visit skill up by simply learn click on the link in the description to know more plugins directory so the moment you use these uh, particular methods that you want to use the J unit these will be automatically imported over here into your system now you can just simply call this method into the main uh, void main and then the uh, specific method will be executed as a form of test cases so this is the mechanism that how you will be setting up the project initially you got the imports you got the uh, particular annotations configured and with that the uh, specific jar files will be automatically being added up into your class path whatever the jar files we added up we downloaded previously we can also have that added up into the custom class path we can modify this uh, build path of JUnit 4 which is coming up automatically we can just simply say right click build path and configure so this JF unit 4 we can actually import we can remove it from our system and we can add our external jar files also into the uh, build path or the class path over here so that depends upon you that how you want to perform the customizations around that part but yes the particular main benefit of using the uh, Eclipse is that it's already having the JUnit plugin installed. Both 4 and 5 version is installed. Whatever version you feel that you want to include, it will be included and the plugins are already installed. So you don't even have to download the jar files manually. So that's how you will be able to do a very basic initial uh, setup of JUnit and how a basic project can be created over here in case of JUnit. So that's it for this topic. Thanks everyone. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.